Pride is a protest and it's our communities that are the most heavily policed and mistreated. At Liberty we've made this advice and information video to help equip you with knowledge in case you have to deal with the police. We've also got resources on our website that you can keep on your phone in case you need them. We're also going to talk you through your rights as an LGBTQ person of colour if you're ever at a protest, stopped by the police, stopped and searched by the police, strip searched or arrested. Disclaimer, we might use language that you find upsetting to reflect what language the law uses so that you can understand the legal position. This is not language we would ordinarily use, but first, here are some top tips for dealing with the police. Number one, stay calm. Always try and stay calm with dealing with the police. Even if they're acting aggressively or angrily or forcefully, it's always best to stay calm. Two, you can record on your phone. You can always film the police. The only time you can't is if the police believe the filming would be used for the purposes of terrorism. But this is unlikely to apply to you during any regular interactions with the police. Three, no personal details. In any interaction with the police, from being stopped to being arrested, you never have to give your name or personal details. Number four, know who to call. Always know the phone number of a trusted person and a lawyer who you'd want to call if you were arrested. Five, obstruction is a criminal offence. If you physically prevent the police from doing something, you could be arrested for it. If the police think you're obstructing and you're not, state calmly that you're not obstructing and keep a safe distance. Number six, don't give false information. Never give false information to the police, like lying about your name or your address. If the police are asking you for your information and you're not sure if you want to tell them, just say no comment. Remember that just because something is allowed in law doesn't make it right. Always think about your mental health after an interaction with the police. If you're going to a protest, it's always best to wear dark clothing that covers any marks or tattoos that you might have that would make you identifiable. Leave your ID at home in case you're worried about the police stopping and searching you and finding your ID. Take anything that you would need for the whole day. So for example, take food, water and medication. You might be out longer than you intend, especially if the police kettle part of the protest that you're in. So wear glasses instead of contact lenses if you can and keep a spare pair in your bag. Don't take any valuables with you and don't take anything that you wouldn't want to get arrested with. If you wear a hijab, tuck it in if it has long ends to prevent it from it being pulled or grabbed. And try to wear a fabric that has more of a grip like jersey. Try not to wear pins as they might injure you and bring a spare hijab in case the police use pava or a kind of pepper spray as it can linger on your hijab and re-irritate your eyes. Whenever you come into contact with the police, they should treat you fairly and not discriminate against you based on your race, age, sexual orientation, sex, religion, disability, or because you're trans. What does this mean in practice? The police shouldn't stop and search you based on your race, ethnic background, or nationality. If you're disabled, the police need to make reasonable adjustments to remove disadvantages that you may face in interacting with them. This may include verbal or written disabilities. The police should always treat you with respect. If they refer to you using a racial slur or misgender you, you can complain. And we'll explain how at the end of this video. When you're stopped in public by a police officer or a PCSO and ask questions about who you are, why you're there or what you're doing, this is known as stop and account. This is not the same as stop and search. Do you have to answer their questions? Most of the time, no. You have the right to refuse and just walk away. You can't be searched or arrested just because you refuse to answer their questions. You don't have to tell them your name, address, or what you're doing. Just walk away. When do I have to answer police questions? You must give your name and address where the police have reason to believe you have engaged in antisocial behavior. The police will tell you if they think you have. If you don't give your name and address, then you could be arrested. But this is the only time you have to give the police your name and address. If the police ask you for your nationality, you do have to give it. Never give false information. This could be seen as obstructing the police, which is an offense. Be aware that the police have the power to arrest you to find out your name and address.
Stop and search is one of the most used and most controversial police powers. Stop and search is disproportionately used against the black community, with black people in London being more than four times more likely to be stopped and searched than white people, and young black men being 19 times more likely to be stopped than the general population. There are two kinds of stop and search, suspicion-based stop and search and suspicion-less stop and search. Suspicion-based stop and search is probably the one that you're thinking when you hear stop and search. The police can only stop and search you if they have a genuine suspicion that you are carrying illegal drugs, a weapon, stolen property, or something that could be used to commit a crime. The suspicion has to be reasonable. So if any ordinary person was in the police's situation, they would also have the same suspicion. You can't be stopped for no reason, and you cannot be stopped because of your race, your sex, because of your trans, or because of your physical appearance, including your gender presentation. What will happen if I'm stop and searched? If the police stop and search you, they must give you their name and the police station they're from, tell you what they expect to find off of you, give you the reasons for the search, and give you a record of the search, unless it isn't practical for them to do so. What can the police search in public? Police can remove outer coat, jacket, gloves, footwear, and headgear. Police can place the hands on the inside of your pockets and feel around the inside of your collars, socks or shoes. Hair can also be searched, but officers consider your gender, religion or culture and can do this away from the public, away from the public if needed. If they try to remove more than this, then this counts as a strip search and this can't be done in public. Can the police take off my head covering? The police cannot take off your head covering like a hijab during a regular stop and search. If they want to remove it, it must be done by an officer as the same gender as you and in a private setting like a tent or a police station. The only time the police might be able to take off your head or face covering is if something called a section 60 order is in place and if they think you're only wearing it to conceal your identity. A section 60 order, also known as a suspicionless stop and search, is where the police mark out a geographic area and within this area, they're allowed to stop and search anyone without suspicion. For example, in June 2020, the police marked out an area of central London during the BLM protests as an area where they could stop and search anyone. Where Section 60s are granted, there is not much you can do to prevent the police carrying out this type of stop and search, but you are still entitled to these rights. The police need to tell you that a Section 60 authorization is in force and explain what they can do under this power. You are still entitled to a written statement that you have been stopped and searched under Section 60 if you apply within one year. The police can only handcuff you during a stop and search if they think you might be hiding items, try to run away, or become violent. The police can only keep you there during the search, and this should be for as short a time as possible. Okay, this bit gets a little complex. Well, let's face it, details matter here. The police can only strip search you if they think you are hiding an illegal item under your clothes, such as a weapon. They have to be authorized by a senior officer first. A police constable can't do this without a senior officer's permission. Unfortunately, police may mistake items such as packers as concealed illegal items, and this may be used as justification for a strip search. During a strip search, you may be asked to remove sensitive items such as binders. What does a strip search involve? It can involve exposure of intimate body parts, but your dignity and privacy should be respected. Police should explain the reason for the search. There must be at least two other people present. You should not be required to remove all of your clothing at the same time. You may be asked to hold your arms up in the air, stand with your legs apart and open your mouth, or bend forward, but you shouldn't be touched. You should be allowed to get dressed again as quickly as possible. The search should take place in private, away from members of the opposite sex, except for a reasonable adult that a vulnerable person or a child has asked to have present. If genitals or breasts will be exposed, there should be a minimum number of people present and no members of the opposite sex, unless there are medical staff. It should be carried out by a person of the same sex, if something is found in your mouth, it can be removed. If it is found in another orifice, it cannot be removed unless the police have a warrant or you can remove it yourself.
the law says that strip searches should only be conducted by officers as a safe sex as you. If you have a gender recognition certificate, you can show this to the police if you want to, but the police should not ask you for it. Unfortunately, being non-binary isn't recognised in law, so you should tell the police which gender you prefer to be treated as. However, the law gives the police the power to assess what gender you are. If the police don't believe you, they can treat you as the gender they think you are. They must record that they've done this, so get a copy of that record if this ever happens to you. If you are made to feel uncomfortable during a search, for example, if your appearance or gender presentation is commented on or your requests are not met, there are things you can do about it, which we will talk about at the end of this video. Just because the police can do this doesn't make their assessment right and they have to treat you with respect and dignity throughout. Just because the police action is lawful does not mean that it cannot be a difficult or painful experience. Remember to do what makes you feel safest. This might mean disclosing your identity or expressing a preference as to who you would like to search you immediately. However, there is no shame in not disclosing that you are trans or expressing a preference to be treated as a gender that you are not if that's what makes you feel safest. If you think the police have discriminated against you or if they've been rude to you, aggressive or unhelpful, you can make a complaint. Make it really clear in your complaint if you think they've discriminated against you because the police have specific guidelines when dealing with discrimination complaints and have to pass some serious allegations straight to the police ombudsman. You could get an apology, an explanation, assurance it won't happen again or the officer might face disciplinary action. If you want compensation, you can speak to a solicitor specialising in police law for more advice. Have a look at Liberty's website for more information on making a complaint. If you're struggling after an encounter with the police, please do put your mental health and well-being first and reach out to one of the services listed at the end of this video. You can also read everything that was in this video on the Liberty website. Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride. Happy Pride.